Hello and welcome back to Patient Knowledge. My name is Dr. Kirmani and this channel is all about health education. And today I will be talking about various heat related illnesses and heat stroke is one of them. The reason why I chose heat stroke is because many parts of the world are experiencing extreme heat conditions and recognizing the symptoms of heat stroke can be life saving. So let's get straight into it. In this video, I will be telling you about heat related illnesses. What's a heat stroke? What are the risk factors or causes of heat stroke? Is it a dangerous condition? How can we diagnose it? What's the treatment? Can we prevent it? I'll also tell you about workplace related heat illnesses and give you some tips to promote hydration at your workplace. At the end of the video, there's a list of foods that can help you beat the heat. Now, 70% of our body is made up of water. And water, when it is lost from our body, can cause dehydration. This can happen because of too much water loss due to sweating or perspiration, or not having enough water, or a combination of two. When our body gets heated up, it begins to sweat. This is a mechanism to remove excess of heat from the body and it cools our body down. Now, sweat contains 99% of water and 1% of minerals, lactic acid and salts. Our body has got almost 4, 4 million sweat glands which act like tiny machines that produce sweat. They are mainly found in palms of hand, soles of feet, cheeks, forehead and armpits which secrete sweat. These are called eccrine and epocrine glands. Now this excreted water needs to be replenished soon or else it will lead to dehydration. And dehydration can give rise to various heat related illnesses such as heat rash, heat cramps, heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Now heat rash are red itchy bumps that can appear on your face, arms and chest. Heat cramps can happen on the abdomen, arms and calf due to loss of water and excessive salts from the body. Heat exhaustion is recognized by excessive sweating, weakness, nausea, vomiting, muscle cramps and headache. Now, if this is not taken care of, it can progress to a more severe form of heat related illness, heat stroke, where a person can become hot develops fever, there will be no sweating at all, they will become irritable, there will be rapid shallow breathing, they become confused, may throw a seizure and faint. Now what's a heat stroke? It's a heat illness where a human body is overheated. The core body temperature rises above 40 degrees centigrade or 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's a medical emergency. Now the body is basically shutting down because of being overheated. And it goes into a state of shock where the blood pressure drops and the pulse rate becomes quite rapid. What are the causes? Well, there are a plethora of causes or risk factors of heat stroke. Age is one of the factors. Children under four years of age or elderly more than 65 years of age are at an increased risk of getting heat stroke. This is because their body cannot adapt to these extreme heat conditions. People working in hot weather, those such as construction workers or those working in factories or warehouses, athletes, those who consume alcohol, people who wear excessive clothing in summer, obesity, people with lung disease or heart disease, and those who are taking medications to lower their blood pressure, diuretics, which are also called fluid tablets, antidepressants, and people taking cocaine are prone to get heat stroke. This is because these medications cause dehydration. Now, is it a risky condition? Well, a person who gets heat stroke can die within 30 minutes if rapid action is not taken. This is because Heat stroke can damage our internal organs such as kidneys, liver, muscles, gut, lungs, brain and even circulatory system. 
Now, what's the treatment? The treatment is aimed at cooling the body to a normal temperature to prevent any complications. Now, if you or somebody else is likely to get uh, likely to get a heat stroke, call for help. In the meanwhile, move the person to a cool, shady place. Raise their legs to improve circulation. Remove any extra clothing. Cool their body with ice pads or wet towel. If they are conscious, give them water and sports drink. Avoid giving them any drinks that can cause further dehydration, such as tea, coffee, soda, energy drinks, and alcohol. When they arrive at the hospital, it will be treated as a medical emergency. The doctors will run some tests to confirm the diagnosis and also to check for any complications. Blood tests are done to look for the levels of potassium and sodium. Urine test is done to check for any kidney damage. Muscle function tests are usually performed to damage to check for any muscle damage. And X-ray and imaging such as CT scan or MRI are usually performed to look for damage to internal organs. Now this can be prevented by hydrating yourself. Drink plenty of water or sports drink every 15 minutes if you are in the hot sun. Drink 12 glasses of water in a day to keep you well hydrated. Wear loose comfortable clothing, preferably light colored clothing so that it doesn't absorb heat. Use an umbrella in sunlight and also use sunscreen. Avoid heavy meals, oily food in summer. Instead, prefer light, healthy meals. Avoid drinks that cause dehydration such as alcohol, tea, coffee, soda, and energy drinks. And avoid staying outside in extreme heat. Workplace-related heat illnesses can happen due to dehydration. This can be seen in people who are involved in physical labor, who wear heavy protective clothing, work in the sun, or work in factories or warehouses where temperatures are quite high. But dehydration can be identified by the following. Increased thirst, tiredness, dry mouth, and excessive sweating. Now, if you're not sure about the severity of dehydration, perform a pinch test where pinch a part of your skin on the back of your hand and um, pinch it for about a few seconds and then leave it. Look for um, the time taken for the skin to go back to normal. If it takes longer, it means the dehydration is quite severe and the pinch test is positive. Here are some tips to promote hydration at your workplace. Keep fluids accessible. Uh, provide adequate hydration education to all the workers. Choose the right PPE, it's something that will allow the air to cool your body. Use body system. Just keep an eye on your co-worker if they develop any of the signs of dehydration or heat stroke. Um, inform your supervisor and have an emergency plan ready. Now here's a list of foods that might help to beat the heat. Watermelon, amla which is an Indian gooseberry, cucumber, mint, coconut water, fennel seeds, radish, lemon, bananas and buttermilk. Include them in your diet to beat the heat. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. I hope this information was useful. If you wish to hear something about, leave it in the comment box below. Bye for now.